welcome to another segment of Package of Brilliance. I'm Deborah Anderson. And I'm <laughs> Stacy Walker. And today we have a special guest, Lois Wyant. And welcome, Lois. It's, it's wonderful to have you here. And why don't you take a moment, um, you know, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you help people. Um, who is Lois and how, what are you here to help us learn? Well, thank you, Deborah. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I specialize in online marketing and there's different areas of online marketing that we kind of project on these days, but um, I've been working in online marketing for about 10 years now. And I'm happily married, have three children growing up and four grandchildren. So life is exciting. Congratulations. That's fun. Okay. I'm new grandma. I'm, I admit it. So it's just <laughs> on that one. Um, um, I think some of us are accustomed, you know, and, and understand it, but there's probably a lot of newbies out there. Do you mind telling us a little bit about that, even the topic and how, how that helps us to understand the online reputation? Sure. So your online reputation is so important these days because everybody is searching and doing all their research online. And if you don't show that you have a five star reputation or at least a 4.8 or higher in that range, 4.8 to 5 is kind of like the golden ticket, um, then chances are you are more than likely going to be sending people to your competition. So we'll go into some details as far as what you, how you can build up that reputation and why it's so important. It sounds like a really broad topic. I mean, it sounds like we could we could talk about this for like 15 hours to even scratch the surface and to cover this in a 20 minute segment. Wow. So if you had to you know give advice to a new person that's just starting out with this and, and they're saying, wow, 4.8, how do I even come close to that? What are some some areas that they can focus on to try to aim for that? golden spot of the 4.8 to 5? Well, the hard part is that you have to understand that if somebody's unhappy about the service or the product, they're quick to go online. But you out of 10 people, if you have one unhappy person, that person's going to go online instead of the nine happy people. So what you need to set up is a process or an automatic way to ask those nine people to go online and share a review. Because people are happy to share reviews they just kind of assume it's normal that you should have such great quality or great service or that type of thing. They don't think about the fact of bragging about it online. And so what we have to do is encourage them to go online and brag about this. So there's some different ways that you can work through this. You need to ask them. All right, now there's a disadvantage of just asking people in general, because like I said, maybe one out of 10 people are probably not, could be unhappy with your service or your product. So you don't, you don't want to ask that one person because it, there's no way, especially on Google or Facebook, there's no way to take reviews offline. So once they're online, the only thing you can do is bury them with good reviews. And that's a lot more work. So you can either make sure that you're only asking the people that you know are happy or know are, are your, you know, your super clients, um, either like a verbal request, um, an email, a text message, any of those types of procedures. It's always good to send them a link to whatever directory you're wanting them to go to. So if you're trying to send them to Google, now keep in mind that only people who have Google accounts can leave a Google review. So if somebody doesn't have a Google account, they won't be able to leave a review. All right, same with Facebook. If they don't have a Facebook account, they can't leave a Facebook review. So it's a little tricky as far as like people who don't have specific accounts. And it's kind of, in today's age, it's kind of weird to think that somebody doesn't have a Google account or a Facebook account. But there are some people out there that don't. So you could send them a direct link and then ask them just to leave a review. You could email them and ask them ahead of time, hey, did we do okay? And then if they say, yes, we loved it, then you could send them their link and say, can you leave this review? Now, there's a little bit of concern because that's just adding extra work. And if you're a solopreneur type of person, you know, one more thing on that list to do is gonna be really hard. So it's, um, it can be a mental strategy to make sure that all happens. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the number of reviews online is also important because if you don't have six to 10 reviews online, 
on a regular basis, which is monthly, then your business is going to look like it's closed. And so if you have reviews online and they're six months or a year old, people are thinking, wow, they haven't done anything great in the last six months. And again, you're going to, you could send them to your competition. So those are some things that you have to really work on and keep in mind as you're looking for your reviews. So tell me, Deborah, how many people or what percentage of, you, of people do you think read reviews? I read reviews. And if I don't read reviews, um, I wish I had because sometimes I find out somebody it's like, oh my goodness, somebody actually mentioned that. Why didn't I read that ahead of time before I got burned on this one? But um, yeah, I, I read, especially like books on Amazon and I leave a lot of reviews on Amazon, but that's, how do I know if it's a good book unless somebody actually says something or this is a good author, great mm -hmm. topic, whatever. But yeah, I would think, I don't know. Stacy. I, I read reviews all the time, especially for Amazon um whenever i i do a lot of online shopping i really don't like going out <laughs> out too much even pre-pandemic so reviews i read them all the time and i also like to leave, uh, leave reviews too and yeah. the only time i do you brought up a great point lois the only time i do is when i'm asked <laughs> you know like we can't assume that people are automatically going to leave a review. You know, I think the simple ask is powerful. So thank you for hearing that. Yeah, definitely. Very, mm -hmm. very powerful. So, but actually 92% of people read reviews. Mm. So that's a high percentage of people. And like I said, if you don't have the reviews there, so if you're, I don't know, let's say you're a clothing boutique and I'm new to the area and I'm Googling clothing boutique and there's eight or eight of them on the front page that's not like a Yelp listing or something like that. And I'm going through them and everybody else has, you know, 16, even like a 4.8 review and you have no reviews. I'm going to go to one of those people with the reviews. I'm probably not even going to consider you because you're not showing up as people bragging about. So that's where the reviews are really important. Now, if you have a lower review rate, let's say you're at 3.5 or 4 point. Okay. What do you think that does to people, Deborah? Uh, look elsewhere. And I've seen a few of those on um, things that I like I've reviewed and then I look and say 3.5 and so I thought that product on Amazon was wonderful or that book was wonderful. Why do they have a 3.5? And I actually try to see if I can, you know, leave a five so I can kind of offset that 3.5. But yeah, normally just me without knowing anything about the product or the book, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm not 3.5. I'm not going there. Okay, Stacy, what about you, babe? Same, same. Um, three point five. I'm gonna be. I'm going to be curious first of all because I know sometimes people can uh, purposely, intentionally want to ruin a business's reputation because mm -hmm. they're disgruntled, and so I will go through the reviews and just read what people are saying to see if it's a genuine review. Like maybe there was something going on with the product or service, the customer service was, you know, not humanized. Uh, but so to make it to decide, like, are, are these real reviews or, this, or is this somebody really just going based off of their emotion? So um, that that's the way that I look at it. I, I do investigate before buying that product or service to see like what is going on yeah. with that product or service or that company. Very That's good. interesting good. that you say that because I, I just saw one the other day for a book. I thought it was literally the best book I've ever read. I mean, I won't go all into the, the book, but I mean, I definitely gave it a five. Somebody gave it like a one star on Amazon, but then they said, I only read the first chapter. I couldn't get past that. And I'm like, why are you leaving a review when there's like 20 chapters and you only like to me that's not qualified. So I kind of discounted that in my own mathematical calculation of the reviews. Yeah. That's true. Well, three, you know, when you get into the lower rating, it, it does affect your business. But there was actually a report done by an economist, or excuse me, yeah, economist at the University of California, Berkeley. And he published an article on the Economic Journal, in which it said that if you could increase your rating by half a star, it would increase your business by 19%. Just by increasing your rating, moving it up, a half a star. So if you were a 3.5 and you could get that to a four, that would improve your business. 
Okay, so that means that you need to be asking your happy people to leave reviews. And we do have a way that, that it happens automatically. We have a program, a proprietary program, in which case you can have people like sign in and then it automatically sends them a text message asking them for a review and an email. You could hand them a postcard. Um, but the process there is that then it takes them to a, a feedback page and they leave their review. And if they give you a four or a five star, then it automatically takes them to Google or Facebook and says, hey, copy this and place this here for us. But if for some reason they gave you less than a four star, it'll take them to another page that says, oh, we're really sorry that you're unhappy. We really wanna make sure this is good for you. We wanna make this all better. Please share with us what happened. And so it gives you the flexibility to automatically ask everybody for a review, but filtering them out so that only the good reviews end up going online. Wow. And this is software. This is um, something that you offer people. The proprietary software is something yes. that you awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what? That is brilliant, Lois, because you're able to give people, business owners, an easy way to make sure that not only do they get the, get the reviews, but if someone's not genuinely not satisfied, that it reroutes them to like a customer retention uh, page, which I love that. And I think the what you design, your company design is brilliant and it's definitely gonna be such a huge benefit for the people that are watching and listening. I'm curious on the, the ethics of, I don't know if that's, I don't even know how to phrase that question as far as, I mean, I've heard things like don't incentivize it, don't, you know, don't do the, the Amazon has rules you can tell I spend way too much time on Amazon, but um, all these different rules. Yeah. So, yes, it is true that you cannot like, oh, leave us a five star review and I'll send you a gift card or something like that. It, you cannot do that. And, you know, as people have said, oh, well, how would they find out? Well, I really wouldn't want to know <laughs> if they found out <laughs> because, uh, you know, if it's something like Google, they found out they'll completely ban you from the Google listing. So it's not something that I would want to test, but yeah, you need to follow the rules. And then the, this program does follow those rules because basically what we're doing is we're asking people for their feedback first. And then we're like, I said asking people to then leave the reviews, but we're finding out up front by the feedback who would who may not give us a good review. But we're letting them know that they're important to us and they're important to our business. And we want to know what we can do to make things better. Did you know that if you could make an unhappy client happy, they're likely to be a lifetime client? Yes. So, For me, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> a lifetime so, client. You know, and then depending on the size of your business, there's so many times where somebody, you know, in the business is you know, an associate or an employee of yours said something in the wrong tone of voice or looked away when they said something or just there's so many things that people will take personal, you know, that's not meant that way at all. And if you could find out that, you know, Sally Joe's unhappy because when she checked out, Mary Martha said, oh, you know, because the machine got aggravated and she took it personally. Like, you know, what did you, you know, if you could find out those things and just make it all right and explain or have a conversation with people, you're building your business just because you care. I didn't realize this when, like yesterday, I called again, Amazon. I'm saying Amazon. No, they're not paying me to say Amazon, which is really, <laughs> um, but there was something, and I won't go all into detail. They did something that was, because Amazon has always had awesome customer service for us when, when I've dealt with them. And they did something. And I was like, you know what? This upsets me so much that I'm going to cancel my Prime account. And I don't normally react this way. This is, I mean, Stacy, you know me. I don't normally like just go off this whole thing, but it's like, I'm going to cancel my Prime account. I'm not going to order from you anymore. I'm going to look up your competition. And she's, you know what i'm thinking how about if we give you a full refund and if that product shows up and you can keep it and the refund and all of a sudden it was like oh i love you guys again and I'm like, are you that flippant are you that shallow that you just switch that quickly back and forth but it really it it made me even more loyal than it was two days ago i like that story i mean that's a great example and i i know i i made a couple of mis well more more than a couple 
I'm always making mistakes, but um, or learning experiences. But I know from the past, whenever I had a dissatisfied client, you know, I provide a guarantee that I'll work with you until you get the results, you know, and usually they say yes, you know, I, I've never had anybody say no. And then also I go, of course, I always go above and beyond. But the thing is, is like, once they know that, you know, I'm there to help them because, you know, a lot of people get burned online. Right. Um, but once they know, like, okay, I really want to make this right. And I tell you, they're like the super fans, they become the super fans and they end up buying other products and services. So I could see how that works, Lois. Wow. I'm, I'm probably going out of order on this one, but how do people go find this awesome program that you're offering? Like, how do we, how do we find you? How do we find your program? How do we go that next step? Cause I know I want it. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm located at JFT, so it's J as in Jack, F as in Frank, T as in Tom, webmarketing.com, and you look under resources, and it's um, online marketing, or excuse me, reputation marketing, and uh, there's a whole process there. Now, actually, right now, we're offering a beta program to test out our proprietary ship program. And um, it's at a reasonably discounted rate right now. So it's $50. How easy is that? And you send us an email list of 50 people. And we'll put those people through the program to ask them for reviews and work on getting you that first five five-star re reviews online. So you, know, you do need to have your Google listing claimed and one or two other directories claimed so we have a place to send them. Wow, that's that's easy and affordable. Yeah, that's doable. <laughs> now, um, and you said your website, you're also um, findable like on imagine Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. social media sites as yeah. well. All under JFT Web Marketing. That's easy to remember too. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. excellent. As well as the button for the um, free resource that you're offering. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Lois? Yeah, so we're going to have a whole video program I've shown you how this all works and there will be a special bonus at the end of that program to give you a chance to try out the reputation management program for a really very very special price wow wow um and for the like the, the final words of wisdom those well i think it's really important like, that we keep in mind that with our online area that everybody's searching online for something whether it's specific your service or they happen to come up because they're searching an idea. And it's a question of whether or not you're going to promote your own business or if you're going to promote your competitor's business. So your reputation is going to actually get people to come to your business instead of having no reputation or having a bad reputation and sending people to your competitors. You know, so if I need a new roofing, and I go online, I'm searching roofers, and I see one guy has 287 reviews, and he's got a 4.7, and you have two reviews, and you have a 4.9. I'm going to go to the other guy, because obviously he's, it, it would appear that he's made more people happier, and that he has more experience. So you need to make sure that you're out doing your competition and staying ahead of them. Makes a lot of sense, especially that comparison between the 4.7, 4.9, but it's that quantity of the, that's hitting that four point. That's really interesting. I love math, can you tell? But you know, <laughs> that, that's really helpful. Um, Stacy? Um, I just want to say, Lois, like, thank you so much for your generosity and for opening the attendees' eyes to another dimension to, you know, not only packaging a brilliant idea into a viable product or service, but also, you know, giving them information that they may have not even thought about and also uh, continuing to want to support them on their journey. So I'm just so happy that you contributed to this series and, you know, everything that you shared has been definitely valuable. And I know that the, the series would not be the same without you. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure to meet you, ladies. Yes. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another segment of Package of Brilliance. And we will see you in the next segment.